All right, this is going to be another um, kind of animation quick tip and um, a little more exploration into a similar feature found in both Maya and Motion Builder and, and Max. And, and um, I'll show you the feature in both Maya and Motion Builder real quick as well, just to, to kind of compare um, and understand what it is and where it is uh, so that if you're used to using it there, then it'll make sense when you get to Blender. So um, the first thing I realized when I got to Blender, one was when I loaded an animation in, um, you know, the graph editor is powerful, the dope sheet's powerful, but um, how do I do some basic things that I'm used to? And one of the things that came up was how do I time warp or um, map the animation to a curve? So um, reading through the Blender documentation, um, I started looking through the, uh, the nonlinear animation modifier list and, and trying to see if maybe it's a modifier. Also trying to understand what all the documentation is telling me. And, uh, you know, the, the under evaluation we looked at before the influence, um, and I mentioned I didn't really understand what animated strip time was. And so um, I dug in and explored this a little bit more and wanted to share what I found. Uh, it turns out this ends up being the equivalent of uh, what's called a time warp inside of Maya or Motion Builder. It allows you to um, map the time of the strip, which you, know, you can replace the word strip with clip. You can replace the clip um, playback with an animation curve. So let's look at that inside of um, Maya. Let's jump over to Maya. All right, so I have the Modus uh, Mocap Online TC Sword Pack free animation pack character loaded. Um, and in Maya, under animation, we have the ability to um, create a time warp under key scene time warp. Uh, and yes, there is a time warp on a clip inside a time editor, but I'm just looking at this generically so that we can you know, compare features. Uh, scene time warp. Um, shows up, and if we were to, to delete the existing one I have here, we can see that the animation plays back normal, and when I create a scene time warp, it automatically creates a uh, interpolated curve that's set to basically linear. It's got two keyframes. Um, there are tangent handles here, and it maps from zero to whatever the last frame is, in this case, 164, okay? Um, so now when we scrub, there's actually no change. But if I were to go in and insert a key and start to play with this, um, let's say I drag it backwards, now you'll see that uh, when we hit play, he speeds up or slows way down, goes backwards even and then, then goes. So um, if I were to go over here and move this about and insert another keyframe and move that down, now we can see that starts to, to swing the action, reverses, because now we're telling the, the basically we're telling the F-curves to reverse and move backwards through time and then continue to play. So if we hit play on this, slow, reverse, and then attack quickly. Okay, so that's mapping the existing animation over time to this curve. If we look at this in Motion Builder, um, in the graph editor, in the F-curve window, uh, you have the ability to apply this not to the whole scene, but to selected channels. So in this case, we're gonna grab the rotation, and I've selected the entire rig, and um, I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna create a new curve, and with my F-curve selected, I'm gonna hit um, Apply. And so now you can see what the animation curves look like. And again, this is mapped automatically to 164 and 0. So there's no change in the animation. Now if I were to go ahead and insert a keyframe, just like I did in Maya. Now as I change this, you can see what's happening. And this is actually a nicer display to actually see what, what, what the curve is doing. So as I change the time uh, curve, you can see that it's stretching out the beginning of this. So it's going to go slower at the beginning. And then it's going to speed up. And here again, I can insert another keyframe and drag this down and pause it. 
So in the motion village case, it doesn't, it'll start to reverse and go back, but it doesn't actually play the curves backwards <clears throat> when you go below zero. It just is a, a time, time slow. Time slows down or speeds up. You can compress it. You can see what this looks like. But though once you get to zero, it, it basically floors the curve. Okay. Um, and then you can detach this or apply it. So you don't have to uh, you don't have to commit this to the animation, or you can reuse the same curve over and over again, depending on you know what your time warp is doing. So you can you can time warp several animations using the same curve, and you don't have to rebuild it each time. Now in Blender, this is a little different. So let's go ahead and go over there and look at that. Um, so here I've loaded in, in the exact same animation, and um, I'm going to close my on motion builder real quick. Okay. Uh, so now we can see I've loaded this in, and if we are in the NLA editor, nonlinear animation editor, um, you can see that I've got the camera and armature. I'm just going to turn that off and go ahead and select my character um, so that that pops back in and uh, expand this up a little bit. Okay. All right, so now I've got my, um, my clip and uh, or I've got my, my track, but I don't have a, the, any, any way to change the, the time information yet. So I'm going to go ahead and collapse this down to um, an NLA track and a strip slash um, clip. And then we'll go to the bottom under evaluation and we're going to turn on animated strip time. But what I need to do first is I need to go back to the beginning frame and turn this on. And then I can go to the end of the animation here, 164, which is what we did in the other one. And um, I don't think set, turning this off and on resets a key. It just sets a key initially when you first turn it on. So what we need to do is go to 100 and insert a keyframe. And if this was the graph editor, we can see that the strip time uh, function home Oh, I didn't get my key set over here, sorry. Zero, strip time, zero. Insert a keyframe. Okay, so now we can select these two keyframes, and I'm going to hit uh, T and set this to linear. And then, uh, yeah, linear, and then V to set the, um, the handle to... Uh, Let's see, aligned. Maybe I need to leave that Bezier. Uh, let's see. T to make it Bezier, and then there we go. Okay. So that way we have um, the similar ability to, to change the warp. All right, so what this should do now is it should be exactly like we had set up in Motion Builder. So the last frame ends up being um, mapped to 100%. So this is a, a percentage, 0 to 100 on the last frame. Now if I were to change this and drag this over, you can see that we're going to speed up the entire animation for this uh, strip and it's going to finish on frame 100. If we change it back, again it's going to, we're going to change what the time mapping is. If I bring this down, It'll play less of the animation. Actually, this might need to be um, to 164. Let's let's check. So I'm gonna hit T. Uh, sorry, N. Bring up my value and 164. Okay, I'll set that back to linear. Okay, yeah, the animation finishes there. So this is this is mapping between the frames. So if I drop this down, um, another thing in the graph editor that's really nice is changing the view to show um, sliders, and then uh, I can hit N and turn that off. And now I can just like the channel box in Maya, I can move um, 
move the, the keyframe. So make sure you're actually on the keyframe. Now when you move that, it should adjust the, um, the, the channel. All right, so if we bring this down to 50, yeah, it's going to play. So in this case, uh, Blender's strip time is mapped from um, the start of the animation up to 164. That's the end. And then um, we can control this back and forth. So I'm going to leave this one on 164. So I'll hit uh, up arrow to go to that keyframe. I'm going to set this at 164 to so jump it back up to the rest of the animation. And then I'm just going to change how long or how the time gets there. So I'm going to go ahead and right here just drag a drag a keyframe down. And so we can see that it's going to start to play and it's going to reverse and then come back forward. So I can actually do that again and drop it down. And just like Maya, it's going to play backwards instead of like Motion Builder where it floors, it plays back and then finishes. So now if I hit play, play back, tell it to um, frame drop. So now we end up with the same uh, exact time warp ability inside of Blender that we have in Maya as a global scene time warp and as in Motion Builder. Obviously, if in Motion Builder, if you need to uh, time warp just a part of the action, you can. And then here, you'd need to separate it by track. But this works just like Maya's global time warp. Um, which is great. I just uh, had no idea what those. Um, actions we're doing in the NLA and uh, found that it wasn't very well documented and it basically said this works the same as the animated influence and I found that that wasn't the case so um, and then I guess cycle cycles it within the strip so I think you can compress the time and then cycle it again it, this this part wasn't clear but the, the animated strip time basically if you remap that word into uh, time warp then if you're my animator looking to do the same thing, uh, or a motion builder person trying to work on, you know, kind of slowing down or editing a, a move for mocap, um, one nice thing, like, we can find just where the sword strike is, this sword strike here, and we can start slowing it down. So when we hit play, it scrubs. It's going fast, then it slows down for slow motion, and then back up to normal speed. Now, this is nice because this this replaces just having to change the global scale of the action, right? So I can still speed up the entire move uh, to play faster. And then the time warp is going to work within that. Notice, though, that if you change the scale of the, the clip, your time warp time now doesn't update, so you have to go in and change the scale of the time warp curve as well. Um, and I don't think there's a way to get this strip time into a clip. Uh, maybe there is. Uh, it didn't look like it, though, because it seems very specific to armatures. Um, so anyway, just keep that in mind. If you change the scale of your clip, the, um, the end frame doesn't change with the evaluation. But hopefully, if you use the, uh, the time warp slash strip time, you can leave the clip scale at 1. And then you're um, you're going to just adjust the the move time here, and then you can go back and speed it up or slow it down. All right, hope that helps. Um, anyway, I was still exploring and wanted to share this because it's a it was the thing that came up and I asked a few people and they didn't know, and I couldn't find um, anything related to time warp when I searched on the Blender, Google forums and everything. So. That's the answer, and uh, let's keep going.